make it stronger. That's a lot better. I like your thought process, but make it stronger. Even stronger. Welcome to the pinnacle of Ubel. Enter Fiendlink. That is my post-Infinite Forbidden deck profile, incorporating the Fiendsmith. In today's video, I will not only show you a one-cut combo with the Fiendsmith, no. I will go over every card and every ratio and explain everything. But before we start, rest in peace Promethean Princess, thanks for your service. Like the format, the deck will change a lot, but try to be open about it. I mean, it's not only crazy strong, no. It's also very fun in my opinion. Without further yapping, let's begin. First we start with Terra Incarnate and honestly it's the same as always. It's a bad draw but we have to play it because of the combo. That's also the reason why I don't play the third form. It's basically just another Terra Incarnate. And I want to minimize the chance to draw bad cards. One OG Yubel. There isn't a reason to play another one. You will see everything in the combo. One Shavara. Obviously he is at one but honestly even if he came off the ban list I do think one is the correct ratio. There is just no reason to play a second one but there is a big reason to play three Fiendsmith. The star of the show. A one card everything for the deck. It's a starter without committing your normal summon at all. I do think anything less than three is incorrect. I cut down one Dark Beckoning Beast and instead filled the place with Chaos Summoning Beast. I like that card with the new stuff a lot more since it basically transforms one opening into a good combo. Opening is also way better into cards like Draw, but I do think if you open both, you start with opening anyways. In testing so far, it's been great. Even though he is a suboptimal draw, any extender, thanks to a certain Link 2 in our extra deck, transforms that normal summon into a good combo. Overall he's fine, but I do think if we would have the space, we would still play the third Beckoning Beast. Fabled Lurie. We play it because of the new Fiendsmith spell. Basically if it's discarded you can special summon it back to the field, so it even has great synergy with the Dark Beckoning Beast engine. It's important because it's Light Fiend and the new Fiendsmith Link 1 needs exactly that and that is a good Fiendsmith combo. Draw and Lockbird, that's the only hand trap I will talk about because the others won't really change. I predict Fiendsmith to be everywhere because of course it's one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh engines ever printed, so Draw is really good against that if they start with Fiendsmith or the Tractor spell since both of them have to add before they start to play. And then it can cripple decks that normally don't die to draw like Snake Eyes. 3 Squirmer and only 2 Lotus, I predict Squirmer to be very good since it will be a draw format again in my opinion. And Squirmer really shines in that regards because you can play a lot with him without accessing your deck. And only two Lotus. That card is still very strong but the dynamic of the deck changes a lot. We still have a lot of one card combos, even more than before thanks to Fiendsmith opening and now even Dark Beckoning Beast. And thanks to Squirmer a lot of two card combinations. For example, one Chaos Summoning Beast and one Squirmer is a good combo, something that wasn't the case before. So the deck changes to a degree where too much normal summons cancel slow it down. I have to admit though, it feels a little bit weird to cut it down to two, but so far in testing the third one never came up and even if you need it for some reason you can recycle it with Phantom. If I am wrong about Droll being a good card in the new format, I can see myself cutting down Squirma to two or something, but especially in the Droll format, like I mentioned, he's really really good. Fiendsmith Tractus. You add to that card by discarding one Fiendsmith and that card basically adds another Light Feed monster, but after that you have to discard one card. So so Lurie is perfect for that. Since it special summons itself if it's discarded and then you have basically the material for the new Link 1 and with that full combo. Terraforming for consistency and nothing changes here, 2 Nightmare Pain, 1 for the combo and 1 for the grind game. You don't need more and you don't really need any other Ubel spell or traps, they only slow the deck down a lot. Opening of the Spirit Gates at 3. With the new Fiendsmith stuff it's basically a full combo and it's crazy in the grind game. I was a fan of that card since day 1 and I'm happy that 3 is correct now. I mean before that it wasn't really wrong to play it at 3 but it was definitely my player's preference. I could have seen myself cutting one down but but with Fiendsmith it's definitely right to play it at 3. Now let's get to the spicy stuff, the extra deck. And oh boy, I had to make sacrifices. The first being Princess, but the second sacrifice is Almirage. It's not bad or wrong to play Almirage, it's just that I don't have space for him. With Fiendsmith and all of the other stuff combined in mind, we are not as dependent anymore to link off the Beckoning Beast as before sometimes. So even though it hurts quite a bit and probably if we would have one more space it would be Almirage, I had to cut it and so far it wasn't really a problem. The Princess has the same reason, we just can't afford it anymore, but 
fear not, I've found a combo where we still have layered interruptions and we are safe against Droplet and Dark Ruler. And yes, it's still just the normal one card Nightmare Throne combo, but I will get to that later. Fiend Smith Requiem. It only needs one light Fiend Monster and it's basically a Lone Fire Blossom for Fiend Smith. It's a really important card and basically the reason why we play Lurie and the new Link to Moon of the Closed Sky. The effect is not relevant for us since we don't have the space to run in the Underworld Goddess, but it's Light and Fiend and only needs two effect monsters. So any two monsters have the ability to link into the closed sky and then bridge into the Fiendsmith engine. That is broken as hell. Fiendsmith Sequencia. It's a new Link 2 that basically fusion summons from the graveyard by shuffling back its material. Important to note is that you can only fuse into a Fiend monster and we have two new Fiendsmith fusion monsters we can utilize with that. Bear Trees. The Fiendsmith engine can easily make rank 6 and that is basically a combo piece if you only open Beckoning Beast or Opening so you can bridge into the Yubel engine by milling the Samsara and then to just rerun it. With Muckraker. If you want to know more about that I showcased that in this video so just check that out if you are interested. Chaos Angel. That is the card I Mirage died for and so far in testing it's broken. Since we don't play the access code link package anymore we need something to push through boards and go for lethal and Chaos Angel fills both boxes. We can easily make him by just having Phantom since Phantom is level 9 and any level 1 on the field and we can even make him unaffected if we have access to Lurry or one effect veiler. Normal summon effect veiler is just broken as always, but if you manage to make Chaos Angel unaffected, some decks have a really hard time to get rid of that. He's been performing well and after I played him a little bit, I don't want to miss that anymore. Fiendsmith Lacrimosa, one of the new fusion monsters and probably the reason why Beatrice will be on one of the next ban lists. It just needs two light feed monsters and you have plenty of that after you did your Fiendsmith combo so don't worry about that and you can go into him via Sequencia and he on summon can reborn a Fiendsmith from the graveyard and two level 6 can make any rank 6. And he can even deal burn damage so yeah it's a great card and now the big fusion monster. Fiendsmith dies Iray? I hope I pronounced it right, I don't know. It needs one Fiendsmith and two light Fiend monsters, so basically the same requirements as Lacrimosa, you will always have that, don't worry. And he is basically an Omni Negate for potentially multiple cards, but you will see that in the combo. Two Phantom of Jubel, of course broken card, some in the OCG play 2, some play 3, so it will come down to player's preference, but to how I build the extra deck I cannot afford a third one. And so far I don't have a problem with that, I mean the third one can come up, but honestly not really that often and in the grind game if you don't need the extra body on the field you can just use Nightmare Throne to recycle the Phantom. So 2 is completely fine in my opinion, but now I will show you the updated one card Nightmare Throne combo that doesn't die to Droplet, Dark Ruler, Super Poly or Nibiru. Of course featuring the new Fiendsmith stuff, but like always first we start by activating Nightmare Throne. To add one Samsara to the hand and then we normally summon Samsara, activate its effect to special one Spirit and Spirit will then set us one Nightmare Pain. The combo is basically the same up until a certain point, then it changes a lot. We activate Nightmare Pain to pop the spirit to add one Squirma. Chain link one spirit, chain link two Nightmare Throne to get all of the Ubel forms in rotation. Then we link Terra Incarnate and the OG Ubel into the fifth summon, Yama. Yama of course will add best doggy Shavara and now that's the only point since Yama is summon number 5 where the opponent can nip you and it literally doesn't do anything. You still have Squirma, you still have Shavara, a graveyard filled with Ubel stuff. It's crazy because they don't have any other choice than to nip you here. If they do not nip you here, you just go into Phantom by fusing away Terra Incarnate and either you Bell, the OG one, or Samsara. Oftentimes I like to keep the option open to reborn Samsara, so I just reborn in that case the OG Ubel. And now nip doesn't do anything anymore. If you have the ability to fuse into Phantom earlier, which oftentimes comes up, just do that and then begin with the combo being protected. We use Squirma's effect to special summon it and now with Yama and Squirma we go into Rage. By using Squirma's graveyard effect you can reborn Spirit of Ubel and then you can immediately use Shavara to pop the spirit. Chain link 1 spirit, chain link 2 Yama. Yama will reborn the spirit and spirit will get back from the deck the OG Ubel. Important, don't destroy Shavara with Yama, we still need it. What if I tell you that we don't go into Varudras turn 1 anymore? Of course Varudras is still in the deck, it's still a good card, it's broken, one of my favorite new cards, but we save it for the grind game instead. 
So basically, you just go into Varudras once it's your turn again. But what do we do instead turn 1? Well, I'm happy to show you. We use Shavara and any of the U-Belts to link into Moon of the Closed Sky. Of course, important, use Shavara's effect to set Chamber. We use Moon of the Closed Sky to go into the new Fiendsmith Link 1. And then we use its effect to tribute itself to special summon any Fiendsmith from the deck. Now we link Fiendsmith and Spirit of Jubel into Sequencia. We use Sequencia's effect to fuse into the big fusion monster. By shuffling back Fiendsmith, the Link 1 and Moon of the Closed Sky. To finish our turn, we link away Sequencia and Rage into, of course, what else, Apolusa. Okay, we still have one step to do. We activate Sequencia's graveyard effect to equip itself to a non-Link light Fiend monster. In that case, it's of course Iray. And now Iray is untargetable because of the new equip and it has two on-field non-target Omni Negates. To explain it better, you basically get Omni Negates up to the number of Link rating the equipped monster has. He is untargetable because of Sequencia and important to know is that you have to use the up to two Omni Negates in one activation. You can't save one Negate for later. Which isn't a problem most of the times. I mean of course, if you can negate two good cards just do it, but it's oftentimes enough to just negate one problem card. Like Talents, Evenly or Dark Ruler or Droplet. Wait a moment, Dark Ruler and Droplet? But we cannot react to it with monster effects, can we? And to that I say, yes, you are right. But we actually don't react with the monster effect to them. For that, we have Chamber. Let me explain. If they use Dark Ruler, we of course cannot react with any monster effect to it. But what we can do is activating Chamber. And to that, we can chain monster effects again. So if they use Dark Ruler, you chain Chamber. And then you chain Iray to negate non-target cards on the field, being Dark Ruler or Droplet, if they don't pitch any traps. But... That rarely comes up. So we have an Appalooza for two, an Omni Negate for up to two cards non-target on the field and Phantom who then can float into other u forms. But on top of that, we still have Chamber and Rage in the graveyard to go into SP, which on its own is already broken. It's completely bonkers. I mean, it's a lot of interruptions. Keep in mind, only one card did that. You don't need anything else except Nightmare Throne. Crazy. Really fun times ahead of us, but in one to two days are openings, content creator openings for Battles of Legends Terminal Revenge. Fingers crossed for Phantom and Moon of the Closed Sky. See ya!